Welcome to lesson one in a series of one of how to love your lunt. This magnificent instrument is the LS100 THA double stacked. It's an absolutely magnificent beast, um, but they're not always massively uh, obvious as to how to use them, so I'm going to rather scarily dismantle this one and put it back together in front of you. I'm not going to completely dismantle it, but uh, you'll soon see what I mean. Uh, the top end, so let's start with the easy bit. Okay, so it's a four inch refractor with a double stack unit. Uh, purely, purely for solo viewing. You can't see anything else through, through the sun. Uh, the top end, we have a zoom eyepiece. It's the, uh, the really rather nice lunt, uh, what is it, 7.2 to 21.5 uh, zoom eyepiece, which is very handy for just getting um, a good image scale and a bit of a bit of power if the uh, the seeing's good. Uh, simple twist, low power to high power, low power to high power, and it has a nice twisting rubber cap there, such so that you can get your eyepiece comfortable, your eye comfortable against the eyepiece at a at a good distance. There we go. Nice bit of kit. Works very well, of course, as you'd expect. So I'll put this one out of the way. The next piece in the optical chain is of just a straightforward diagonal. In this case, it's two inch Williams Optics uh, diagonal. Exactly the same as you'd expect to see on any normal nighttime astronomical telescope that requires a uh, a right angle diagonal in it, so it can be used on your normal telescopes as well. It's not specifically designed for solar viewing, it just happens to be needed on this telescope. Keep it tidy, put the eyepiece back in, leave that over there on its side so it doesn't gather dust in it. Now, this bit here. This bit is an achingly expensive thing called a blocking filter. Okay, this particular one is the B three four hundred, designed for straight, designed as a straight through element, perfect for photo photography with large chips. You can see the size of it there, so you can't see through this thing. It's a, it is a fundamental and important component to the optical train in a solar telescope. Okay. Now, one thing about uh, LUNT telescopes and the way they're designed is that this blue element of the blocking filter does occasionally start to fog up. It does need maintenance. Okay. Now the maintenance is very easy but it's worth doing every you know, six months, 12 months, just just keep on top of it. Uh, there are some grub screws at the bottom here. Put them in there. Just loosen off a couple. And that element will pop out, okay? It'll pop out. It's well protected, it's nicely sealed on this particular one. Um, make sure that the, the golden glass element there also doesn't hasn't got any residue on it. It's just uh, wipe it off with a with a uh, an optical cloth. And the magic, the Australian magic at least, to getting rid of anything and cleaning it up is CLR. It's great. Literally, all to do put a oops, pardon me, a container, which is this one. Uh, half fill it with CLR and gently place this element in it. Go away, have a cup of tea, come back in five minutes, give it a good rinse, wipe it down with that optical cloth again. Okay? And it'll come up absolutely sparkling. No problem at all. If you've left it too long and it's all gone absolutely rotten, don't worry because you can always give Lunt a shout and they'll send you another one. Okay, if you want to see how I'm just putting it back on, I've just literally laid it 
flat on the desk. I'm sorry you can't see this. So that that element is nice and flat again. And there it goes. Back in. Easy as. And I'm going to put those two together. Now, the focuser unit. Standard, beautiful feather touch focuser. Just sat there. Um, and believe it or not, with these grub screws, there's three in total. I can take it off. Off it comes. Very modular. This fella is a double stack unit. Now, when you're solar observing, you have a choice for this telescope. You can observe it single stacked or double stacked. Single stacked is particularly good for seeing the bright prominences. Okay, so the wavelength of light that we're looking at with a single stacked unit is specifically looking for prominences. Um, but as a consequence, it's a little bit broader in, in its uh, pass through and the very, very fine surface detail is much less obvious. Okay, so we put a double stack and this double stack absolutely brings out all of that incredible surface detail that you see amazing when you're seeing the, the, uh, the flares and the faculae and the sunspots. Absolutely beautiful, stunning. It does, of course, because it is so much narrower in bandwidth, mean that the prominences are less bright. That's the trade-off. You can still see them, but not as bright. Now, with this double-stacked unit, you get to choose. Not a problem. So if I want to look at a particularly bright and fantastic prominence group and not worry too much about the surface features, this is a double-stacked unit, and it comes out entirely. Okay? Place that very carefully because that is non-trivial in price. So uh, if you break that one, you'll be crying. Put your focuser back in. Put your blocking filter, diagonal, and your eyepiece back in. And now you have a Lunt single stacked 100 mil telescope, absolutely ideal for prominences, for looking at prominences, okay? Now, whilst we're at it, I'll keep on up the top. This thing's called a Soul, soul Searcher by Televu. Uh, it works very simply by basically operating such as a pinhole camera. There's a hole in the top here, there's a little bit of frosted glass down here, and when the sun's pointing straight through, you'll see the image on that. That just helps you find it. It's not the most difficult object in the world to find the sun. So there's that bright thing up in the sky. And at this side, I'm not going to turn it around. You've got the optic. The, what is uh, it's 102 mil f7, 711 mil uh, doublet, and it works absolutely fine. Uh, it's narrow band, of course, so you're just looking at a teeny part of the red spectrum. So the fact that it's a doublet doesn't make any difference whatsoever to the, uh, the quality of the image. Now I'll put the double stack back on. There we go. We can take that unit off. Put the double stack back in. Uh, now. It really doesn't matter which way this is. It doesn't matter. So if you prefer to have one of your, your uh, pressure tuning devices on this side and one over there, or you prefer to have one there, you can line these up any way you like. Being me, I just like to have all of these Nils kind of lined up. There we go. So I'll put that one in. Turned that one up by accident. And now I can put these two in. And it's back. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. 
The most interesting art with one of these fellas is actually is actually uh, tuning it, tuning it appropriately. Now, check the internet, check the forums. Everyone's got their own method. Now, I always end up with these two knurled knobs in roughly the same position. Uh, this one has got, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, six threads showing from the base. This one has two, so this one's much closer in. And by and large, that gives me a really good result. Okay, and you can play. You can see when you move them in, how they operate. Now I can take this one off entirely. There we go. Inside that is a small hole going through to the, uh, the etalon inside. Uh, it's tuned literally by pressure. There's only something like two or three PSI pressure differential between entirely off and entirely on. If there's been a significant change in your local barometric pressure, as in if it's feeling muggy and you've and you've got high pressure or if it's going very nice and dry and you've got low pressure, take it off altogether to equalize the system and then make sure it mates back. You don't want to, to, to damage it. And sometimes it can be just a, a little bit tricky to get to make. Let's see if I can do this without stripping it. There we go. There we go. Uh, again, these are replaceable. They will stick off and you can replace them, but it's very rare that one would have to do that. Uh, and I'm just going to push it down to where I knew it was good before because that's good provision. The same, the same happens here. Now, one more thing. I won't take it off fully. But if you need to re-grease them, if you need to put a little, there's, there's underneath that piece down from this piston there are two rubber seals okay um, and there's a bearing and a nut there unscrew that drop the piston out clean it grease it uh, put it back together simple as everything about these things is maintainable uh, That's because Brian did a fantastic job of putting them together in the first place. Here. Andy did the designing. You got Brian doing the building. And between the two of them, they do a very fine job. The only part of this telescope that I'm not going to pull apart, but I'm intending that you could, you can take these tubes and you can take the, the, the optic off as well. Other than that, that is your lunt. That's your classic lunt double stacked telescope very maintainable absolutely exquisite views um have fun enjoy maintaining these fellas don't be scared just make sure you're operating in a nice clean environment and that you're not going to drop anything on a hard surface if you do happen to drop it okay clear skies